camera's rolling. Hey, bro. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Just want to show a scripture. It says uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 3, For this is a good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be tes testified in due point for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle, I am speaking the truth in Christ, and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles, in faith and truth. So I just want to just talk about apologetics, and uh, the importance of apologetics. Apologetics is, is giving an answer for the faith, for defending the faith. Mm. And a lot of Christians today uh, are anti uh trying to study really and uh, I just want to talk about that so Mike have you got any questions to put to me about apologetics or yeah what would you what would you say to someone who's interested in apologetics but is is starting out in ministry and he wants to study apologetics what do you give advice to him my, my advice would be to um, maybe start uh, with uh, uh, looking at different apologists like um, if you Google Ravi Zachariah and go on to Ravi Zachariah Ministries, study what he has to say. Uh, William Lane Craig is another helpful uh, person to go and study. And um, another person is uh, Greg Benson. Uh, so I would just study what other apologists are doing and, and the work that they're doing. So give me an answer is another one. Uh, Ravi Zachariah, uh, the C.S. Lewis Institute, um, these are some of the areas where you can go and study apologetics. Oh, man, um, how important would you say apologetics is when it comes to street preaching and defending the faith? How how much importance would you put emphasise well, on that? Well, it's important to remember that we believe as preachers and evangelists in the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. So we're saying that apologetics doesn't save anyone. It's the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Mm. And it also says that we shouldn't argue contentiously. Yeah. But it does say, give a reason for the faith. Yeah. And it talks about in Acts chapter 17, Paul reasoned with people in the synagogue and in the marketplace. So it's not wrong to discuss and debate the Christian faith. Um, it's important because the Christian faith is not blind faith. Christian faith is based on evidence. Mm. And we can provide evidence for the Christian faith. And it's important also because in the marketplace, in the secular nation or in the Islamic nation, the Muslims and the atheists are presenting arguments all the time uh, in their cultures against the Christian faith. And we have to get involved in polemics, answering their arguments, uh, so that when people come and do evangelism, people are going to be willing to listen. But if, if you don't get in there and put your point of view across, people are going to put in error and it's going to be made difficult for you to evangelize if people are not even willing to listen to you because they've listened to other people's arguments yeah how um, regarding apologetics when would you say it was a good time to s step away from an apologetics dialogue and when's the best time not to would you say uh, when the best time to um, I think that's a good point uh, I think you always pray for discernment pray when you're talking to someone uh, when is the appropriate time? Most of the time, we're, well, all the time, we, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us and the Word of God. But if someone is sincere, truly sincere, and asks you a sincere question, like, why does God allow suffering? How do you know the Bible is the Word of God? Mm. It's no good saying to them, oh, just believe. They're asking you an honest question, yeah. and it requires an honest answer. So that's when you need to answer that question. So a lot of people will argue with you for argument's sake and you just ignore that. Mm. They don't really want to know. But there are some people that genuinely are wanting to know and they're asking you questions. And it's no good you saying, just believe, let the Holy Spirit teach you because that's not going to help them. They, they need you, the, you to answer their question. Mm. So we let the Holy Spirit work. He does the work in conversion. He does the work in applying the Word of God. Uh, and we're getting the gospel across to people, we're always focusing on the gospel, but we're just willing to answer people's questions, that's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you got any, anything further to add to apologetics, how we could 
um, enhance the apologetics that you have? Is it? I think you, I, I think uh, there are different methods of apologetics. One yeah. is the uh, presuppositional apologetics, which says if you imagine a castle and you could either throw uh, bullets at the wall, you could either bulldoze the wall or you could go under the castle and bring the castle down. And presuppositional apologetics goes under the foundations of every worldview like Islam, atheism and collapses the system within itself. So that's presuppositional apologetics. Mm. Evidentialism is when you present historical arguments for the Christian faith like Gary Habermas uh, does and Mike Lacona <coughs> where you present evidence for the historical death and resurrection of Jesus. Mm. Then there is reformed apologetics uh, by Alvin Plantinga <coughs> who, who says that uh, and reformed epistemology which says that uh, faith, uh, that, um, uh, faith in God is a ne necessary precondition for knowledge and that's called reformed apologetics. Then there's classical apologetics done by William Lane Craig giving arguments for evolution uh, uh, arguments uh, from the intelligent design that there must have been a designer uh, so these are some of the different ways of doing apologetics I do mainly presuppositionalism with a bit of evidentialism uh, in my apologetics uh, yeah. so you need to know the different styles and which one is more biblical I think the more biblical one is the presuppositional apologetic uh, the, the, the presuppositionalists like Greg Banson and Van Til give you lots of biblical data to show you what you're doing is in, in discussing with people is from a biblical foundation. So you need to get a grasp of the different ways of doing apologetics and, and finding the one that best suits you or, or the one which is more biblical, which I think is presuppositionalism and evidentialism. This, because the, the resurrection was preached at Mars Hill and Paul says, you know, there's evidence for this. So. Yeah. Um, and it, sorry, go on, mate. Do you, do, it's um, I myself, as an apologist, find it really effective doing apologies because basically, rather than dealing with straw, it destroy it gets rid of straw and arguments and all this. I heard this, I heard that, and all these theories. It, it, it dismantles theories and just divides a line between truth and error. Would you agree? That's it. Yeah, that's I, th the, I think for our ministry that we've been doing in apologetics down at Hyde Park. We have, we've emphasized in doing uh, solid scholarship, so me and you and others meet regularly mm. and we do cutting edge research. We go and not only read what the apologists are saying, but we actually go to primary sources. And, and when you do that, when you start studying and you go to the primary sources, when you meet people, you can dismantle some of the myths that are out there, like the myth that there are dying rising gods mm. uh, there's a myth out in the internet that there are dying rising gods mm. once you go and read the ancient historical sources and look into the scholarship you find that this idea that there are dying rising gods is just nonsense mm. so it, it is helpful it helps you to it, it, it actually helps you to help people to get away from the myths that they've been taught in yeah. secular culture and I like I like the way Jesus did apologetics as well. He um, he always quotes scripture, which we do, and he always asks questions. I think that's important as well for apologetics. Um, wow, yeah, ministry yeah. and I think everything that we do as apologists, that me and you and others have done, we stress the Bible. Uh, we don't go out of the Bible. Mm. The Bible is our authority. The Bible is the Word of God. Yeah, and we base everything on the Bible. Yeah, and I think what you're saying about questions. We found the power of questions. Uh, when you start to ask them questions, you find that people start getting rattled. They yeah. like to ask you questions, but when you start to ask them, has the Quran changed? What? How can you justify your atheism? Yeah. People start to really get rattled, and and it makes them think and open to the gospel. Yeah, amen. 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 That's it. Yeah. Thank you, That's brother. Good. Thank, Thank you, brother. Thank you.